last Saturday. Herb 48, Bonnie 45, Nancy 16, and Kenyon 15 were all killed in their homes Saturday night. The Clutters are survived by their two older daughters, Beverly, a student at the University of Kansas, and Eve, who is due to get married next month. Police currently have no leads. If you have any information regarding the case, call the KBI at 785 <laughs> Chucks in Vegas? I'm on my way. Damn it, it's the police. Do you think they're on to us? No, baby. Our place is It's crowd missed for parole. All those checks that wrote. Stop right there. Hands behind your back. You're under arrest for parole violation. Stars living for the fame. 
So tell me about yourself. Okay. Don't get me started on Max Lives. Oh, Perry? Oh, we were just going down to Fort Scott to visit his sister. Um, we were picking up some money. Uh, she was holding some cash for me. But she wasn't there, so we decided to hang out. We drove around, got a root beer. I picked up some money for uh, the aspirin from the pharmacy. Do you have any, by the way? My legs are killing me. We drove back, I went home with my family, and Perry stayed in a hotel. Now, that's a very nice story. Except for one small detail, Mr. Hickok. Mr. Smith's sister doesn't live in Fort Scott. I'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Hickok. Tell me all the things. That Perry, he killed them all. He's a damn psychopath. Uh, he was the one who murdered the two women. Um, I'm sorry, I meant the woman and the one girl. And uh, Dick wanted to rip her, but uh, I wouldn't let him. I didn't even lay a hand on those women. I don't know why I'm here. Well, you're here because you made two mistakes. One, you left you left a witness. Two, there were there were two sets of footprints left on the basement floor of the clutter house. They match your your boots exactly. All the evidence mounts up. It's time for the jury to decide. The crime was a psychological accident, virtually an impersonal act. The victims might as well have been killed by lightning, except for one thing. They had experienced prolonged terror. They had suffered, and Dewey could not forget their sufferings. Nonetheless, he found it possible to look at the man beside him without anger, with, rather, a measure of sympathy, for Perry Smith's life had been no bed of roses, but pitiful and ugly and lonely progress towards one mirage or another. When Smith attacked Mr. Cutter, he was under a mental eclipse, deep inside a schizophrenic darkness. On count one, we the jury have decided that Richard Eugene Hickok and Perry Smith are guilty. On count two, guilty. On count three, guilty. On count four, guilty. And the sentence is... Whoa, that was intense. I thank you for coming, Mr. Capote. Oh, it was really my pleasure. Thanks again. And you guys, a special treat for you today. Everyone look under their seats for a free copy of In Cold Blood. Woo! Thanks for coming, everyone.
mind and your garbage style.